Hello, my loving viewers. Welcome again to Mass Madison I. It is a few represents at Jeff Nino, and today we shall be doing an extensive revision on Lorudin. Now, so many students have problems in solving Lorudin, and so I believe after this video, you will have at least 80% of your problems solved on Lorudin. Now, we have four questions on the board, and these four questions, I will take my time to explain these questions to your best understanding. Now, let us begin. Um, question number one says simplify log 27 base 3 minus log 64 base 1 over 4 and all over log 1 over 81 base 3. Now the main difference between these questions is that number one, um, the base here is 3, a whole number, but the base here is a fraction, 1 over 4. Now here, the number here is a fraction, 1 over 81, but the base is also 3. So what do we do first? Now when you have 1 over 4, it is the same thing as saying 4 raised to the power minus 1. And when you have 1 over 81, it is the same thing as saying it's 1 raised to the power of minus 1. So now, after knowing this, let us see what we can do. In place of 1 over 4, we will give 4 raised to the power of negative 1. And in place of 1 over 81, we will give 81 raised to the power of what? Negative 1. So let us begin. Um, Okay, so we're going to be having this now. Log 27 base 3 minus log 64 base 4 raised to the power minus 1. We just said that. That 1 over 4 is the same thing as 4 raised to the power of negative power 1. Now, all over. Now, here becomes log. Um, 1 over 81 now becomes 81 raised to the power of negative 1 to the base of 3. Now, that's the first step. Now the next step is this. You will notice that the base here is 3, but my number is 27. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, I will see how many times I will multiply the base, which is 3, to give us 27. And that is 3 times. Because 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. So in index form, 27 is the same thing as written 3 raised to the power of 3. Because I multiply 3, 3 times to get 27. So in place of 27, I would give 3 raised to the power of 3. So here it comes log. Now, instead of 27, I would write 3 raised to the power of 3, all to the base of 3, okay? Now, minus, now, you will see that um, my number here is 64, but my base here is 4 with a negative power of 1. So, what are we going to do? We're going to see how we can make 64 becomes 4. So, how many times are we going to multiply um, 4, which is the base now, to give us 64? And that will give us 3 times, because 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. So 64 in index form is 4 raised to the power of 3. Now, here becomes minus log 4 raised to the power of 3, base 4 raised to the power of negative 1. All over, again, here I have base 3 and I have 81 raised to the power of negative 1. So how many times would I multiply the base to give us 81? 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times 3 is 81. So that's 4. So here it becomes 3 raised to the power of 4. So we have log, okay, 3 raised to the power of negative 4. Now why do I have a negative 4? Because the power here was negative 1. So negative 1 times 4 gives us negative 4, all to the base of 3. Now you see, this is how you can apply step by step in solving this problem. Okay, now next is this now. There's a law called power law which says if you have log n raised to the power of n, it becomes n log n. Okay, so it means our power goes to the back and becomes n and becomes the product of log n. So what we're going to do is this now. Our power now goes to the back and becomes the product of log 3, base 3. So let's see. So here it comes, when 3 goes back, it becomes 3 log 3 is 3 minus now you will notice that in this law we have two powers power 3 and power minus 1 now when the number and the base carry powers both powers go to the back but they become a fraction so what i'm going to be having here now is 3 over minus 1 okay the 3 is the first power and the numerator and minus 1 is the worst the other power that the base is carrying now log 4 base 4. 
all over I have this. Also, negative 4 goes to the back and becomes negative 4 log 3 base 3. Alright. Now, the law that says when the number and the days are the same, the answer is 1. So, for instance, if I have log n base n, the answer is 1. Why is the answer 1? Because the number and the base are the same. The law is called number to the same base law. So, if we should apply that law, in solving this question, we are going to be having this. Now, log 3 base 3 will give us 1. So, what do I have left? 3. So, here becomes 3. Okay, now, I have a negative sign, I have a negative sign. So, minus times minus gives us plus. Now, 3 divided by 1 will give us 3. Now, log 4 base 4 is 1. So, it means I have 3 plus 3, okay, all over. Now, again, log 3 base 3 is 1. So, what do I have now? Negative 4. Are you with me? It is as simple as that. Remember, how did I get a positive sign? Minus divided by minus is plus, and 3 divided by 1 is 3. And log 4 base 4 is 1. Now, 3 plus 3 at the numerator gives us 6 over negative 4. Now, naturally, you don't leave your negative sign as a denominator. So, what do we do? There's a positive sign that 6 carries. So, positive sign be divided by negative sign will give us a negative sign. And now, there's a number that can divide 6 and 4, and that number is 2. So, when 2 should cancel 6, we will be having 3. And when 2 should cancel 4, we will be having 2. Now, minus 3 over 2 is a fraction in an improper form. Or you can say minus 1 whole number, 1 over 2, in a mixed fraction form. So, this is the answer to question number 1, and this is the step you should go when you have a question like this. Okay, without wasting time, let us go to question number 2. Um, if you know this is the first time of joining us in our channel, you are welcome. We really appreciate your time here, and I hope what you are here for, you would get it. But don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to keep on sharing the videos. Now, question number two says simplify log 4 base 2 plus log 2 base 4 minus log 5 base 25. Now, again, the bases are different. It's base 2 base 4 and base 25. So, the best way we can solve this math is we multiply num the number of times we multiply the base to get the number, and so on and so forth. So, now, how many times will I multiply 2 to get 4? 2 times. So in index form, it means 2 raised to power 2. So log here becomes log. Now instead of writing 4, I write 2 raised to power 2 to the base of 2, okay? Plus. Now base 4 now becomes base 2 raised to power 2. So here becomes log 2 base 2 raised to power 2. Okay? Minus. Here becomes log. 5 base 5 raised to the power 2 because if I multiply 5 2 times I will get 25. Again, the law says the power goes to the back, and so here it comes 2 log 2 base 2 plus. Now, the number here is not carrying the power. Now, when there's no power, what power is there? Power 1. So now it seems again that the number and the base carries power. So what will 1 over 2 become? 1 over 2 goes to the back and become a fraction. So here it becomes plus 1 over 2. So what do I have now? Log 2 base 2 minus. Now, again, 5 has the power of 1. So when it goes to the back, it becomes 1 over 2 again. Then what do I have here? Log 5 base 5. Now, the law says when the number and the base are the same, the answer is 1. So log 2 base 3 is 1. So what do I have left? 2 plus log 2 base 3 again is 1. What do I have here? 1 over 2. Minus log 5 base 5 is 1. And what do I have here? 1 over 2. Now the answer to this question is 2. How did I get 2? 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 is 0. So what do I have? 2 left. So the answer to question number 2 is 2. What it right? Question number 2 is 2. Okay. I'm not wasting time. Let us go to question number 3. Question number three. All right, so question number three says if log p base three plus three log q base three equals three, find p in terms of q. Now, when you say find p in terms of q, it simply means make p the subject in this what equation. It is as simple as that. Make p the subject in this equation. 
So, let us see how we can solve problems like this. Now, if you take a look at this question, my base here is 3, my base here is 3, they are the same. So, because the days are 3, what I will just do is this. First of all, this 3 will go back. Don't forget, before this 3 came here, the 3 was the power. So, the power that normally goes back. So, what I will do now is that I will, it's just like a reverse of the law. So, when 3 goes back, it becomes law P base 3 plus log Q raised to the power of 3 now base 3 equals to so 3. A reverse of the law. A reverse of the law. Now, again, I said, because the base are the same, I will pick one of the log and addition becomes multiplication. Now, it is only when the bases are the same that addition becomes multiplication and subtraction becomes division. You must know that. So, because the base are the same, what I will do now is this. Okay, and I will put a bracket. Now, what number do I have here? P. Now, addition becomes multiplication. And what number do I have here? Q raised to the power of 3. Then R uh, as my base, which is base 3. And it is possible for addition to become multiplication because the bases are the same. Now, in this case, where this is 2, 6, 5, 3, 5, there is no way plus can become uh, multiplication or minus can become what? Division because the bases are different. Now, equal to 3. Okay, P times Q raised to power 3 will give us P Q raised to power 3. So I have log P Q raised to the power of 3, or 3 base of 3, equals 3. Now, there's a law that says if log M base N equals to Y, then this means N raised to the power of Y is equal to N. This is how it works. Now, if log M base N is equal to Y, the base now carries the y as a power. It's as simple as that. Now, equals the number k. So, if we should relate this mass, my n now is my 3. My n is my pq raised to the power of 3. And my y is my 3. So, if we should follow this law, it means 3. We carry 3 as a power equal to pq raised to the power of 3. So, let's see how that works. So, here it comes. Um, 3 raised to the power of 3 equals so P Q raised to the power of 3. Now, 3 raised to the power of 3 means 3 times 3 times 3, and that's 27. So here it becomes 27 is equal to P Q raised to the power of 3. Don't forget the question says make P the subject in the what? In the equation. So if I want to make P the subject in the equation, this means P should stand alone without any interruption, without any interference. So for P to stand alone, I have to remove Q raised to power 3. And for me to remove Q raised to power 3, I have to divide both sides by Q raised to power 3. Okay, so when Q raised to power 3 comes out, Q raised to power 3, what I'm going to be having is P is equal to 27 over Q raised to power 3. Now the answer could be in this form, or the answer could also be in this form. P is equal to. Now I have Q as I have power 3 for Q. So I can also make 27 have power 3, which is what 3 times 3 times 3. So here becomes 3 raised to the power of 3 over Q raised to the power of 3, which also means okay, 3 over Q all raised to the power of 3. How did I do this? They have common power. So I factorize out the power that we have in common, and the one I have left is 3 over Q. So either the answer is in this form, or the answer is in that form. So this is the answer to question number 3. So let us begin question number 4, which is the last question for today. Okay. Now, question number four says log x base 9 equals 1.5, find x. It is as if I, this law is just like the last law I gave when the base carries this as a power and x you know, becomes equal to x. So if I want to solve this now, this becomes, um, first of all, 1.5 is the same thing as 15 over 10. Okay, in, in, in proper fraction. So here becomes log x base 9 equal to 15 over 10. 
Now, 15 over 10 can also be divided by 5. If I should divide through 15 over 10, I'll be having this. Log x plus 9 is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, because if 5 should cancel out 15, I'll get 3. And if 5 should cancel out 10, I will get 2. Okay, now we apply the law which says the base carries 3 over 2 as a power equal to the number which is x. So here becomes 9 raised to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to x. Now this alone is called a fractional power law in indices. Now a fractional power law simply means where the power is a fraction. And the, power, the fractional power law says that if x is raised to the power of m over n, it simply means the nth root of x is all raised to the power of n. What does that mean? It means the denominator of the power becomes the root of the base, which is x, now raised to the power of the numerator. Now, if I should compare this, the denominator here is 2, and my numerator is what? 3. So it becomes the square root, not, no, not the, you don't have to include 2, because square root already has an invisible 2. So here it becomes uh, the square root of 9, or is the power of the numerator, which is 3, equal to x. Now we all know that the square root of 9 is 3, so here becomes 3 raised to the power of 3 is equal to x, which means x is equal to 27. And how did I get 27? 3 raised to the power of 3 means 3 times 3 times 3 into 3 phases, and that gives us 27. So class, we have come to the end of today's class on logarithm. I believe you have learned something new today. If you have done, please leave a comment in our comment section for us to know what you learned and if it was really helpful to you. And please don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time here and don't forget to share the video. Till we meet again in our next class. Thank you for watching. My name is Jeff Nine. Bye for now.